Tim Kellerman was eventually brought to court under a misdemeanor charge of unlawful use of a computerized communication system. In a plea deal, Kellerman agreed to complete counseling, 40 hours of community service, and avoid any new criminal activity. It does. I mean, these guys can blatantly send me an email that says, we're going to shoot you in the face, and nobody will do anything about it. Mm -hmm. you, you all know you and I can't go break the law, we can't go do drive-bys, you can't go slash. Right. Yeah. You know, you can't slash his tires, you can't mm -hmm. do anything illegal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was bad, though. I mean, that's the extent of it. Mm -hmm. oh, if you're saying I broke the law... That was Tim Kellerman, a police chief who just openly admitted to wanting to commit crimes during his own interrogation. Not a good move. But that's not the only shady things that happen in this police interrogation. As we know, shady stuff within the police force isn't rare at all. Just like this pretty common situation where the officers are a little bit too friendly with a suspect. This makes you question whether they should be the ones conducting the interrogation, and we need answers to that question. Tim Kellerman, the police chief in the small town of Campbell, Wisconsin, is currently being put under the boot of interrogation. And who is conducting it, you may ask? Why, his very own officers, of course. This is quite obviously a major breach in responsibility, and this should have been handled by an outside department. What's his name? It's all UCD though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Party Yeah. Yeah, the Tea Party guy? Yeah. Yeah. What do you know about him? What do I know about him? He's now here. <laughs> He's suing me in federal court. Okay. Over that banner thing? Yeah, the okay. shit on a bridge. Okay. Yeah. But he's one type Mr. Type A. Um, just, uh, just. Not very much wisdom. Yeah, he won't. It's, it doesn't matter. What, it doesn't matter what the law is. It's whatever he says the law is. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Okay. We got some. Better, we got some uh, attorneys out of Mass and the constitutional law attorneys, mm -hmm. and they're like this guy's going to talk about we're going to win this case. You know, so we're going to go. It went through our attorneys. Mm -hmm. You know, to the town attorney, and they're like, the town's like, well, our insurance carrier's like, no, no, no you know. John's 30 and Collins on the cross. No, 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 we'll get Axley out of Madison. They come in. They're going to mop them up, yeah, yeah, but the trial's not till June or July of next year. It's pretty loud then. Oh, wow. Yeah, he'll yell at our officers in trial. It became pretty clear early on that Kellerman is angry with Greg Luce because he's suing him. And you hear a pretty unfiltered view of what this police officer thinks of one of his citizens. However, his lawsuit filed against him was definitely not baseless. At the heart of the legal dispute is Luce's claim, which states that town ordinance banning signs on an interstate overpass violated his free speech rights. Luce argues that the ban was imposed in response to his Tea Party group's protests on the overpass, which he deemed to be a peaceful exercise of his First Amendment rights. This perspective forms a critical part of his lawsuit, where he asserts that the sign ordinance was an infringement on his constitutional liberties. This lawsuit, however, wasn't the reason the shady situation started. The police chief, Kellerman, was actually arrested and charged with something that he did in order to retaliate against Luce, which our a little too friendly officers will mention a bit later in the interrogation. Yeah. Like just pull up and get up and start yelling. He'll drive by the video, record your ass, YouTube, you have fuck. Well, the problem that I've had with him, I don't know if it's the case, but just because he'll take your, whatever you got going on, he'll videotape it, put it on YouTube, and mm -hmm. spin it up to all the whack jobs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got a couple hundred uh, e emails, death threats, I hope Officer Casper gets shot in the face. Um, just crazy. So, so he, he doesn't necessarily do it, but he instigates it. The officer here seems to be condemning Luce's rights to record and post things online, which is a sentiment that a lot of police officers seem to share these days, but it is important for these people to be held accountable when they have a very direct and potentially dangerous effect on the lives of everybody around them. Okay, I'll have this. Yeah, it's kind of these guys down there. Where was it? Uh, those ranchers? Um, oh, Nevada, was it? Yeah, or something like that. Bureau of Land Management. Yeah, Land Management came in and started to kind of move in on territory, and then of course they put it out on their network, and I mean everybody that had a gun showed up with horseback, and you know, the government, well, the guy that pays taxes, or mm -hmm. wasn't paying for the fees, but none of that matters anymore. Now we're just going to get into the evil government and blah, 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 so. It is, to say the least, a bad idea to show up with guns to something that otherwise would be a peaceful process. However, the Second Amendment is in the Constitution for a reason, 
And as long as things remain peaceful, there shouldn't be any retaliation from police officers when people are carrying in a lawful manner. Either way, the general attitude of this police chief seems to be that he hates anyone that stands against what the government does, regardless of whether or not it's good. Again, this seems to be a fairly common point of view when it comes to police officers these days. He's not particularly the, the suspect in this case. Um, somebody is using his information and signed him up for a whole bunch of different um, solicitations and, and stuff like that, which has gotten him upset. You know anything about that? Do I know anything about that? Yeah. No, I don't know anything about it. Nothing at all. No. I, um... Here we come to the actual meat of the investigation, and the reason that this interrogation is being done in the first place. Greg Luce, the man that is suing Police Chief Kellerman, recently experienced a form of identity theft. More specifically, his identity was maliciously employed to create profiles on a wide range of websites, ranging from dating platforms to pornography sites and even government healthcare services. The heaviest bulk of profiles created were on either gay dating sites or gay adult video sites to be specific. I'm going to be straightforward with you that I know that you know something about that, okay, and that's more why we're here today, okay? Okay. Um, he did report that, that he's got a whole bunch of solicitations. We backtracked it to um, computers signing him up for this, not only at, at your PD, but at your house. Okay, so we know that, which it sounds like this guy freaking deserves it. So this is definitely not something that an officer should say. Obviously, an officer of the law should definitely not be saying that a person deserves the crime being committed against them, especially if it was done by another police officer. But yes, you saw that is in fact what happened. And Kellerman did in fact create those profiles. As a response to the ban on signs, Kellerman originally accused Luce of encouraging Tea Party supporters from across the United States to bombard his police department with harassing phone calls and threats, which, in fairness, did in fact happen. The police station received dozens of calls that were quite shocking and worrying in nature. In a likely attempt to retaliate against Luce, Kellerman created accounts on various websites, including the aforementioned gay dating adult video and federal healthcare sites, using Luce's personal information. Like, it sounds like he's an a-hole, and to do it anonymously, certainly you're not going to go out in uniform and say, hey, Greg, F you, you know? Yeah. Um, and doing it anonymously online just to annoy him is, is probably the more professional way that way, not doing it with your badge on. So... I, I mean, I know that that's, that's, you know, not necessarily something that you think would maybe come this far, uh, but... Okay, well, let's get to the chase. Where are we going? That's what I'm going with. He filed a report, and technically, to use his info like he did is against the law, okay? Okay, and, well... I, I'm being straightforward. Okay. I, I'm letting you come in while you're working. You know, I'm not. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah I, I, I don't want it. I don't. I don't want to do it that way. It sounds like, like, like I told you, this guy. Like you told me, everybody I've talked to, this guy is not, not uh, the most straightforward guy. He's kind of a loose nut. Um, so that's why this investigation got started. Okay. Okay. The sort of friendly banter between these two is honestly a bit disconcerting especially when you compare it to other interrogations that we've covered where the officer is either rude or downright intimidating. That, of course, should not be the norm, but it also shouldn't be the case that an officer gets special treatment just because he's being interrogated by his friends. Either way, the police chief, Kellerman, doesn't seem to be very intent on denying these charges. Clearly, he doesn't think that his actions are illegal, but in fact, using someone else's identity online, especially maliciously, is most definitely illegal. Is there any reason you were doing that stuff, and is there anything beyond just signing them up for stuff that you did? No. I mean, the only thing that I did was just, you know, go to... It was the same thing that we were getting Okay. at the police department, getting signed up for all these email accounts and whatever, you know. I didn't think anything of it. Mm -hmm. And that and that was my assumption because originally when I saw him, I'm like, oh, is this even, you know, yeah, it's kind of 
uh, annoying him, but is there any law that it, it does? And any time anybody does that, uses somebody's identifying information to harass somebody, it does fall under that, I guess. And like I said, I, I had to look it up. They got the case for it to Cheryl sure. County. Sure. Obviously, they don't want they don't any, any bad, bad blood with you. Yeah. Okay. Where, I, where, I where are we going with this? So that's where we're at. Um, we're at the culmination to this point in the case. Like I said, we, we know that it was sent from Campbell PD, sent from your house. Um, the next step, hopefully, uh, your cooperation, confirming which computers it was sent from. Um, we, I feel like we need to at least do the investigation correctly because that's what we're upholding to do. The fact that the interrogating officer brings up that they need to do the investigation correctly is a bit worrying. Actually, let me rephrase that. It is very worrying. Yes, in the grand scheme of things, this isn't a very big crime. In fact, it's a misdemeanor that doesn't carry any possibility of jail time. But it's definitely still a crime that puts someone else in a position of distress regarding their personal information. And if any of you have or know someone who's been the victim of identity theft, you know how terrifying that can be and the damage that it can cause. Um, we're going to have somebody, uh, I don't want to take your work computer. Um, if right. I know which computer it was, confirm that this is the computer these items were sent from. Um, just mirror the hard drive as evidence um, at your house. No, this is the computer. Do do what we need to do so we don't have to take all your computers. Right. I have certain Where are we going? Are we, am I getting arrested here? You're not. I'm, I'm not taking it. If I was going to arrest I mean, what you... Are we, what are we looking at here, guys? Well, well this is just in the interest of full disclosure. This came to me back in January. Mm -hmm. I went on family leave for two months. Okay. And I come back and it's to him. Okay. okay. So it is his investigation. The only reason I'm here is because it was initially filed with us. It was mm -hmm. my case initially. Yeah. I didn't do any work on it. Okay. Um, I got it took off for, for a couple months mm -hmm. and then it got sent through our ranks to him. So mm -hmm. most of your questions are just better off throwing them. Where, where are we going with this? You know, when all of a sudden my the, job here, is that what you're looking for? I, I, I'm, I can't, I, you know I don't have any pull to make you lose your job and I'm, I'm yeah. you're being decent and I, that yeah. is I mean the biggest thing is this guy was harassing the hell out of me, my officers, everybody and it's my only way to be like, all right buddy, you know. Sure. It's like you go on the trip and you're like, you're a douchebag or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The guy was just harassing, but my officers are getting death threats. And, it, it, you know, and that's all information that I like to know. Yeah. That, well, it's just like when you guys, I'm talking about you, like if you're dealing with this guy, like you gotta know what you're doing because this guy is, there was a complaint that he had cut somebody off the other day in traffic, mm -hmm. and um, one of the lacrosse officers went over there and refused to answer the door because he slammed on the brakes in front of some female. So, you know, when he does something wrong, it's just like, mm -hmm. whatever. Gellerman here goes on a pretty long tangent talking about how Luce was harassing the people at the police station, and that he was just doing this to get back at him. Well, news flash, and something that police officers should know, you don't respond to a vile act with a vile act. That's kind of like Police 101, or at least it should be. You make the report and you do things by the book. Otherwise, you end up in a position like this. Also, not to just glance past it, but the interrogating officer says that Kellerman is not under arrest. At this point in time, he probably should formally be put under arrest because he committed an actual misdemeanor. So this seems very much like nepotism. Um, uh, when all is said and done, like, no, you're not going to jail. I'm going to do my report and send it. And I think it's got to go across the district attorney. They'll probably send it to our district attorney to look at to see if they, they want to do anything with it. And that's, I mean, the minimum that I can do. And that's, that's right. my plan. I, I don't want to do more than that. Because like I said, you seem like a good guy. And I, uh, but at the same time. Well, you got to do your job, though. You got to do your job. I completely understand. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know what... Uh, information I stole from him, you know, if you go on like a website and, and that's you know, sign idea. somebody up for like a uh, email a newsletter or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, it's just annoying where we had to go into our things and have to keep deleting all of these mm -hmm. things that we're getting signed up for. I'm like, all right, buddy, you know, you're causing yeah. us a hassle, we're going to cause you a hassle, you know. And, you know, I don't, maybe, maybe it won't rise to that level where it meets the criteria of the <laughs> law. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and I, I don't I don't mean to be elusive, Tim, because I really read this report in January mm -hmm. and it's coming back this week, you know, after I've been gone for five days again for the weekend and, and Jeff's calling me 
you know, and um, you know, my captain saying, well, this is turned over, and this is where we're at. So I pretty much know about as much as you do, maybe a little bit more, but not anything real significant. The friendly officers here seem to know quite little for a case they are actively working on, though this is quite small in the grand scheme of things. Also, the question of what information was used online is a good one. When does it cross the line into becoming illegal? Name? Email? Address? Without that information, it's difficult to make a statement on it, but even so, it's very unprofessional and unethical for a police officer to do this, even if it's something that was done to the police station in the first place. There are many better ways that it could have been handled. And I'm, uh, you know, well, to me, so, fellas, I just think it wasn't that big of a deal, you know what I'm saying? To me, it's just like, you know, you want to mess with us because we were getting messed with. Like, right. It was like over the top. I mean, mm -hmm. somebody was trying to hack into my personal bank accounts. Are you familiar with like Ultra Credit Union? When you log in, mm -hmm. it's like, hey, you haven't ever been here before. Um, put in your security challenge questions. Challenge questions. I'm getting emails that people are trying my challenge questions. I'm like, okay. yeah. what the hell is going on here? People are hacking my personal bank accounts. Yeah. Um, That's a scary thing. Yeah. And, um, and, and no, well, here's the thing. I went to DCI about it. Uh -huh. They wouldn't do anything. Nobody would do anything. I went all the way up to the ranks of DCI. See. Why well, I, I had to write a synopsis events, everything that happened, they're like, well, I'm sorry, you can you can run some malware on your computer. Hmm. And I know that this what? one, it, they, because the, of a cross, once they, the, your name had come up, they're like, we don't want it. They tried asking DCI, and DCI said, no, it's not misconduct in public office, and therefore we're not taking it. Um, and that's why it, it sent to me for, for the last of the follow-up, which is, you know, what we're here doing today. It's interesting that this doesn't fall under misconduct in the public office, because this is a man that is very much in the public office who is very much participating in misconduct. I think there's a certain level of extremeness that needs to be passed before it's considered important enough for them to take it on, which is unfortunate, but a very real situation that happens with a lot of cases. And certainly uh, people are thrown for in those rights, and it's, it, it bothers me that that he's probably done this to you, um, oh, and I don't know. That, yeah, that, that, you know, that's the thing that bothers me. He's an IT guy. That's he. That's what he, what he claims to be an <laughs> IT consultant. I know he's a consulting business. I don't know what that yeah, exactly is. Some sort of IT guy. So I'm thinking this guy is hacking, hacking into our computers, whatever. If a general police station has poor enough security on their computers that an average IT consultant can hack into them, well, it's almost certainly the case that it did not happen. It's very likely that Police Chief Kellerman is just lashing out against the man's job because he doesn't like him and wants to find an excuse to make him look like a bad person. And he may very well be a bad person, don't get me wrong, but that doesn't excuse committing a crime against him like that. What, what more? So you're going to type it out, forward over to the DA's office and see what they're going to do. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's the plan. I think the most frustrating thing was, like I said, I had gone to DCI, literally went to mm -hmm. DCI agents of this is what's happened to us. Mm -hmm. Do you, and I would, I mean, if, if you're okay with I would love to include that stuff in, in the report. Yeah, say, hey, this, definitely. This is where he's coming I was from. even going to our guys going, this is ridiculous. I mean, if you're the police and somebody's messing with you, what do you do? Mm -hmm. You go to the police. Mm -hmm. oh, but when you're the police, how will you I'm sorry, what, we can't, there's nothing we can do for you. I mean, I'd write this like, I'll give you a copy of it like this. You know, five page synopsis of events, everything that happened from the time that we said, hey, you guys got to get up the bridge to, uh, you know, the email hacking and all the other stuff that was going on. And then you got the DCI saying, yeah, no, sorry, nothing we can do. Well, okay. If that's, I mean, these guys can blatantly send me an email that says, we're going to shoot you in the face and nobody will do anything about it. Mm -hmm. This is very likely a real issue. Police officers aren't often taken seriously in the modern age. Officers that are unable to feel protected by their own workforce are very likely to lash out in other ways, for better or for worse. We've seen a lot of those cases in the past few years. All right, uh, so which computer at work was it that the, the stuff was? Signed? Well, it would have been my desktop computer, I'm sure. And do you, and you have your? I assume I haven't been to your office. You have your own office with yeah. your own computer yeah. Yeah. that your other officers have another workstation where they do most departments. Uh, I guess, you know, stack of computers in there, yeah. Okay. You know, six, seven computers. But I'm sure if I did it, it was, you know, okay. you know, something pops up. 
hey, you signed me up for this newsletter. Mm-hmm. And that's the exact same stuff that we were getting at our, you know, our inbox. You got to go in, you got to unsubscribe, go to the bottom. Yes. Yes. I can actually believe that he doesn't remember which computer he used to sign loose up for those newsletters, because it's something that probably took no longer than a couple minutes. To be fair, it's also very easy to sign up for newsletters, with how aggressively they try to market to you whenever you go to any website in the world. You know that too, um, and it goes a lot easier when, when you're straightforward with us. And oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sign up for a couple of emails. I mean, that's the extent of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, if you're saying I broke the law. No, we're not. Yeah. We're, we're investigating a so, harassment complaint. That's, that's, harassing that's, this guy. Yeah, and that's. And, that's, and how long ago was this? January and then that's what I'm saying. And again in March, and, you know, a few more in March. Yeah, done. Yeah, and that was does that sound right? And there was nothing more than that. Yeah, I mean that was the height of it. It is a bit refreshing to see Kellerman being so open when it comes to what he did, when so many other people go silent in regards to anything they did. Of course, there are some pretty bad undertones there. Kellerman doesn't feel the need to keep quiet because he's a police chief and doesn't feel like he's in any danger. Next to that, the fact that there is such a friendly vibe in the room probably doesn't frighten him either. Other people, when they're brought in, are often treated with far more hostility and don't know what they can do to protect themselves, so they stay silent. Even so, so far this really isn't a huge case, and at this point in time, it hadn't even been worked out whether or not it was a crime yet. They were just investigating a harassment charge which later would turn into an actual crime. When I mean, it was really going down. I mean, it was bad, fellas. Yeah, unlike anywhere else. I mean, it got to the point where I had to go personally see somebody, you know. Um, uh, not psychiatrist, but just, you know, mm-hmm. go sit down, yeah. and sit down and talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. Because I'm like, I'm like, same thing I'm telling you, but I'm like, I'm the police. And I go to the police for help. And they say, sorry, we can't do anything for you. Well, who do you go to after that? Mm-hmm. This is actually quite a healthy mindset for a small town cop to have. Not many of them would ever admit to going to someone like a therapist, but it's obvious that this man was having a rough time being harassed. Some may think that what he did to retaliate was justified. Depending on your beliefs, that's not for us to decide. He was in a position of power and very much misused it, which is what is being focused on here. I said that we have DCI that's going to, um, I don't want to take your computers, do a, uh, yeah, flash it, it, I know, I know. mirror the drive quick. Um, that way just got, like I said, because I know this loose nut guy, he, he's going to make sure at the same time that, that we're doing the, the our job the right oh, way. Oh, yeah. Up. Because sure. um, if we if we don't, you yeah, know, yeah here's the problem. It doesn't matter how this plays out. He's going to make a big to-do about it. Mm-hmm. And, to do. Yep, we and, and, mm-hmm. and we want to do whatever we can to <clears throat> alleviate as much of that, even though yeah. it's going to be a, he is. Well, it's coming back on me. I mean, it's going to be a big old yeah. pie in my face. No matter how you feel about the current case at hand, he was correct. We'll talk about the resolution a bit later, but Luce did indeed make a big stink over how things went down and wasn't happy with the results. Yeah, and, and yeah, I mean, it comes in our reality, see, here's the problem. The other side never gets out all that stuff that and he did to us. And that never comes up to such more. And that's, and that's I, I know from the, one of the hardest parts about this job is, you know, is that people can yell and swear, but if it's directed at us, that's okay. But as soon as you yeah. know, other people are there, yeah, like I that, know, then you look back at it, you know, after you, you know, sign one for me, like, uh, Take that, you know. Is it really that big of a deal? You know, right? And and I, right. you you all know you and I can't go break the law. We can't go do drive bys. You can't go. Slash, right. You yeah. know, you can't slash his tires. You can't do anything illegal. Mm-hmm. Did I think I was really doing anything illegal? No. You know. And it, you know, it, it very, very well may be that the DA agrees. Hey, this right. this isn't going to. There's a statute pertaining to it. Yeah, and harassment by electronic and, means. Yeah, and it's like one. You could probably argue each way by looking at this and saying, "Is this fit or not?" Right. Exactly. Hence, that's why it was for to these guys. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah, I so. Um, so as that computer will. Uh, the problem is, your fellow, no matter how it plays it out, this doesn't look good for me. I probably potentially lose my job. Yeah, I, I'm well aware of that. 
and that's mm-hmm. the shitty, the shitty feeling I have exactly. on this is because I'm I'm here just to assist him. Yeah, and yeah. and I you know, but I, mean, I think either way it plays out, I'm probably lose my job. I don't know, you know. Yeah, I, I yeah, that's a possibility, Tim. Yeah, but you know, that's that's all yeah. goes back to the town of Campbell and and not me. Um, yeah, you know, so, about this? Uh, no, no one knows about this. Yet. You're the first one. You're the first one. Okay. I, it, I, do I have plans to call him? Yeah. I mean, if you if you want to call and talk well, about I'll it, call him. Well, yeah, um, yeah. You know, but yeah, I just need to make sure he knows. Um, we we try to keep um, the the search at at the town. Uh, for uh, if you're there, you know, pretty quiet. So as long as possible. Yeah, 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 exactly. Especially because you're being cooperative. Yeah. And and what's interesting is like I've been having problems with my computer lately. Okay. You know, I just ran into spyware this morning. The the, the the toolbar on my bottom, like all the links weren't working. Mm-hmm. Same thing in the back of your head. You're thinking, is this guy still messing with me or what? There's someone inside. Yeah. Room. What the hell? But yeah. Again, who do you call? Mm-hmm. Maybe DCI will see something when they take a look at it, but. It, it, this thing yeah. down there, I guess. What about at home? What computer would you have used? Uh, it's actually a work laptop. Like your squad laptop? That yeah, we have old good. ones that we, you know, after you, after they're out yep. on the road. Yep. Yeah. So you just keep it at home. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's at home now. Yeah, you'll grab it, and that's not a big deal. Um, okay, and we can. Is anybody else home? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, you're married, right? Yeah. Yep. What your wife work? Oh, uh-huh. where's she working? A lot of orthodontic like that across. Okay. How old are your kids? Uh, 16 and 4, or just turned 4. Okay. Four year old in daycare or preschool? Yeah, daycare. Okay. 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 Um, well, I guess, uh, you know, I. It doesn't look good, fellas. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, you know, we understand, and that's the. Yeah, I know it's It doesn't thing. matter because it doesn't matter really whether DA prosecutes or not. This guy's one of those kind of guys. This will be the big to do. And, and like I said, I, yeah. even though yes, that, yeah. that we got to do our jobs and do this, we want to do it as as smoothly as possible. Because uh, yeah. he, he seemed like a straightforward guy. And he's well, doing whatever you felt he could just to to get these jabs in at this guy. And yeah. and because you know, like you said, all, no all the other the, there's there's so much worse stuff that that you can't do that these guys may be doing. So. In the grand scheme of things, this wasn't a huge crime. But Tim Kellerman was eventually brought to court under a misdemeanor charge of unlawful use of a computerized communication system. In a plea deal, Kellerman agreed to complete counseling, 40 hours of community service, and avoid any new criminal activities. The charge would be dismissed in two years if he adhered to these conditions. This resolution left Greg Luce extremely dissatisfied, as he believed Kellerman was getting off lightly and expressed concerns about Tim Kellerman's fitness for future law enforcement duties. Despite the plea agreement, the legal battle continued with Luce filing a federal lawsuit alleging violations of his free speech rights and demanding damages for the identity theft perpetrated by Kellerman. This was in addition to the lawsuit related to the signs on the overpass on the freeway. The town board placed Kellerman on paid leave during this time. Luce actually attempted to amend his lawsuit and say that Tim Kellerman acted under his power as police chief in order to violate Luce's right to petition without retaliation. But the judge struck down that amendment and claimed that Kellerman acted privately without using his power as police chief. Whether or not you agree with that decision is up to you, but I would love to see what you think, so please share it in the comments. Tim Kellerman eventually resigned from his position as police chief after this incident, going so far as to say that it disgraced his reputation. He did seek out mental health disability benefits and eventually worked out a deal where he was paid out for 335 paid hours after he resigned. Greg Luce continued to try to get the town ordinance repealed so he could put his honk to impeach Obama sign back up on the freeway but the court eventually ruled that there was nothing unconstitutional about it because it was a decision related to driver safety. Either way, it seems like neither of them really got the ending they wanted, but it did reveal, once again, the amount of corruption there is in our departments. In this day and age, qualified immunity remains one of the deadliest threats to U.S. citizens. There is no doubt, and as witnessed daily, that as long as police officers in our uncivilized nation are encouraged to murder without consequences, 
we can expect no improvements to our life expectancy. According to the United States National Academy of Sciences, and I quote, police in the United States kill far more people than do police in other advanced industrial democracies. To date, Colorado, New Mexico, and New York have repealed qualified immunity, and we remain hopeful that in the near future, serial killers with badges will be held accountable for the unreasonable execution of citizens. Furthermore, the Academy of Sciences additionally says, journalists have stepped into this void and initiated a series of systematic efforts to track police-involved killings. And I bid to you, my fellow citizens, that this rampage of certified murders must be stopped for the safety of our children, handicapped, and veterans. Please support the new Institute for Justice and their Americans Against Qualified Immunity campaign. Check them out at www.aaqi.com. You'll also find them on Facebook and Twitter. That's Americans Against Qualified Immunity. That's all for now, my brothers and sisters. Stay safe and always film the police.